SBF once again says, I'm sorry, but I, I didn't do anything wrong. The little controversy we have going on between DCG's Barry Silbert and the Winkle Vi, that is actually grammatically how you say it, Winkle Vi. The Winkle Vi twins is heating up as the SEC also gets involved. NFT artists are selling out on Instagram. BitConnect creditors are getting some money back, but not very much. There is so much happening today. I'm also going to look at a bunch of charts and take some of your requests. In the famous words of Chris Tucker, it's Friday, you ain't got no job, and you ain't got shit to do. Let's go. Let's go. What is up, everybody? I am Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel and fist bump right on that like button. It's Friday. We all know that it's my favorite day of the week. As much as I love interviewing people and talking to people and asking them questions, sometimes it's just nice to be alone, you know? We used to do this almost every day where I would review the news, look at some charts. Yeah, it was a little bit much, but I look forward to Friday when I get to do that again and I can be myself and not have to be all buttoned up and conservative because I'm talking to super impressive and amazing people. Like yesterday, my gosh, did you guys watch Mark Yusko, Bill Barheit, Lou Kerner? I mean, could I have three more legendary, intelligent, rich People on the show at the same time. If you guys did not watch that, then I don't know. Have fun staying poor. Of course, we are sponsored by Prime XBT. You can sign up for a new trading account using the link just down below and get up to $7,000. You can trade basically everything there, but that's exactly what you should do there. I like to give you guys the disclaimer every time. Great for trading. Not a custodian, not a bank. Custody your own assets, but use Prime XBT. Check them out if you are going to trade because yeah 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 but anyway should we dive right into the news of the day should we start with him should we start with him sbf this guy denies stealing ftx funds in a new online post because that's what we do we're still just posting stuff online in the middle of our league of legends game look at his face he's licking his lips at the opportunity to convince you that he's not a fraudster and a criminal Look, he's, I mean, I feel like he's staring deeply into my soul and that whoever he's looking at, which is not me, probably he wants them real bad. Probably Caroline, probably Caroline. But he says that the reason they collapsed was that Alameda was bad at hedging. Basically, we traded like crap and they were targeted by Binance, kind of echoing the sentiments of the 3AC guys who have come out of the woodwork, blaming everybody for their problems except for themselves, of course. But nobody's buying this, guys. Literally everybody knows for a fact that customer deposits were like going straight into Alameda and to like shadow banks and they weren't even making their way to FTX. The money was never there. This is just bullshit. The guy's buying time or he's actually this delusional. Maybe he is. Maybe he really believes he did nothing wrong and believes his own hype and thinks that it's all going to be fine. But my God, let's throw this dude into the slammer and get it done. And if you haven't seen his official apology, here's the uh, video. It's pretty crazy. Hi, uh, so uh, I'm SBF, uh, founder and CEO of FTX. My accidental theft of our customers' life savings to create a giant overleveraged Ponzi slush fund for myself is a tragedy that should have never happened. And to all those affected, I want to say I am deeply sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. The beanbags. Sorry. Oops. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. 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 I'm deeply sorry. Heh. <laughs> sorry. Oopsie doopsie. Ladies and gentlemen. Look at CZ. We got him. (laughs) 
some breaking news in the case against disgraced crypto founder Sam Bankman Fried. He was just released on $250 million bond. Sorry. There you go. Pretty good. Pretty good. Not officially South Park, actually. It's a knockoff, but oh, he, he, this is his official apology. That's him. He's very sorry. He's really deeply sorry, yes. Sorry. And if you guys missed it, this is where this dumbass who thinks that he's not going to just continually incriminate himself over and over and over again because he's not listening to his lawyers. This is where on his sub stack, he decided to vomit all of this and say, it's not my fault, guys. If there's one theme, I think, of 2022 and entering 2023, it's that we have a whole lot of billionaires who want to blame other people and not take accountability for their own mistakes and actions. It's literally all we're seeing from every single person who's been a piece of any collapse, right? All these guys are coming back. All of them are coming back out of the woodwork as SBF fails to blame him. And now he's blaming and we have a circle of blame. It's a circle of blame. It's a wheel of fortune. Circle of blame. Everybody knows about that. It's the Lion King. It's the Lion King. But yeah, I mean, he just like, he, I mean, the guy's like still saying that FTX US is solvent. Like everybody knows it's not. This guy's just out of his mind. FTX former engineering chief Nishad Singh looking for deal from feds report. Oh, I bet that SBF is wishing that this guy wouldn't sing. Singh may hold information key to showing how Sam Bankman Freed violated numerous federal campaign finance laws. The crazy thing here is that as of right now, Singh is not in trouble. Guy's not in trouble. Right, he they haven't come after him. He like went out and basically was like, "Oh shit, this is my moment. Tonight is the night I'm going to sell out SBF." He's gonna put his hands up like the ceiling can't hold him. Right, so this guy is talking to prosecutors. He's getting himself a little, uh, as they said. Let me let me get the quote. Limited quote. Nishad Singh, FTX's former director of engineering and housemate of Sam Bankman Fried. They've touched each other is said to have met with prosecutors in a proffer session. Such meetings often include an offer of limited immunity to encourage the interviewee to speak freely. Singh has not been accused of wrongdoing. This guy literally is like, well, we better get ahead of this shit, do a little proffer session. I bet that SBF would proffer that this guy not sing. You know what I'm saying? But we've seen that Gary Huang, 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 people are saying Wong. I thought it was Wang, Chung tonight. And Caroline, they've both had their plea deals. They'll probably go to jail for a while. But SPF should be going away for roughly a 1,000 years. But literally everybody that was in this dude's inner circle is just selling him out, right? Just like holler at these dudes. Maybe they're, maybe I'm going to get in trouble. I don't know. I better get ahead of it. But, I mean, everybody is selling this guy out. Sing. Sing. He's singing. But there's good news. FTX has recovered over $5 billion in assets, bankruptcy attorney says. This is huge. And I'm so happy for anybody who has money on FTX because this is starting to look better than even the Celsiuses and such of the world if this is all actually true. Presumably before, we thought that they had about $1 billion in assets that they had recovered. Well, finding $5 billion more, we don't even know the size of the hole. During their bankruptcy proceeding, they checked the little box that said between one and 10 billion, which seems like an absurdly large range. If you're, I don't know, going to go into bankruptcy, maybe it was one, maybe it was 10. I don't know. It's fine. Same. It's the same. But yeah, man, they're digging up all these assets all over the place, billion of cash, liquid cryptocurrency, and liquid investment securities that they found. So they're basically just scanning through wallets and stuff. This doesn't even include the real estate and all the things. It's starting to look a little better for crypto, uh, for, uh, for, for all the people who are owed money by FTX. Interestingly, it says here, this does not ascribe any value to holdings of dozens of illiquid cryptocurrency tokens where our holdings are so large relative to the total supply that our positions cannot be sold without substantially affecting the market for the token. Right. So that's interesting because there's a lot more here, even than the five billion. They're counting those as zeros, but eventually there could be moments when they can liquidate some of that and get some of it out. So there's a whole lot of illiquid tokens on the balance sheet. But this makes me happy, man. I think that there's a real chance now. And BitBoy said this to me on a spaces recently. I was like, man, I think that uh, FTX creditors are the most screwed. 
And he said, well, I've been doing my research. I went down to the Bahamas. I hollered at the people who talked to the friend who had lunch with the guy. My sister, baby, cousin, Tracy called up. And we think that the assets are not lost. They're just hidden and that they're going to find them. And FTI creditors will be in decent shape. And that looks to be what is playing out at the moment. I like that. I like that. Yeah, in Mandarin and Cantonese, it's pronounced, pronounced wrong, Wong. I guess that I did, in fact, pronounce it Wong. Damn. I'm on fire. FTX creditor claims going for 13 cents on the dollar on bankruptcy marketplace X claims. So that's crazy. So we see this news at the same time, you know, the 5 billion, but also now you can go sell your claim for 13 cents on the dollar, which seems low if they really did find 5 billion in assets. But what do I know? I told you guys a story. Uh, the day that FTX went under, a guy reached out to me, and he's in this article, Thomas Braziel. Actually, Charlie Shrem reached out to me, but he introduced me to this guy. He said, this guy's buying Voyager claims. Bitcoin was like 22000 before it crashed down for 60, 65 cents on the dollar. You know, that's, that's what's going on out here. And I was like, that shit's interesting to me. You know, like the best case scenario was like 72% if Bitcoin continued to go up and could get lower, which obviously it is. And we started talking and FTX collapsed literally like two hours later and all of that went out the window. But plenty of people are looking to sell their claims. But 13 cents seems really low. But interestingly, Thomas at the bottom, a managing partner at Distress Corporate Specialist 507 Capital, told Coindesk at the time that these prices weren't realistic and three to five cents would be where the market has an interest. Keep in mind, this same guy, was they were buying Voyager claims for 60, 65 cents on the dollar. However, as the case slowly progresses forward, it seems like the market has developed a bit more optimism. I wouldn't sell it for 13 cents. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, the market is not saying the same thing as we found $5 billion, but that could still mean there's a five, six, seven billion $7 billion hole. Are you guys tired of talking about F SBF? Do you want to talk about some more billionaires who are... Uh, or triggering us on a daily basis because crypto lender Genesis owes creditors over $3 billion. Digital currency group Genesis parent company is reportedly looking to sell some of its venture capital portfolio worth around $500 million. When I owe $3 billion, I look to sell a little piece of something that's only worth $500 million, you know, to close the gap by like 10%. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Right. And everybody knows, obviously, that Genesis owes money to Gemini, earn customers. That Genesis had like a $2.1 billion loan to Three Arrows Capital that was under collateralized, but not entirely uncollateralized. And that basically they had money on FTX. They had loans out to Alameda. These guys did literally everything that you could possibly do wrong ever. And we're still talking about them. Right. And the question now becomes how much of a separation is there between DCG, the parent group, which obviously owns Grayscale, which owns Coindesk. This article is on Coindesk. Talk about talk about being an honest journalist writing about the company that owns you in a negative light. Yeah, they're going to sell like, I don't know, part of the 500 million of their venture. They're obviously DCG is winding down their high uh, net worth. Uh, asset management business, a lot going on here. But my God, like, how do you owe people $3 billion? Genesis is screwed. The question is, you know, they, at the end of the year, they already had stopped allowing withdrawals. The question is, how will they fix this problem? Well, DCG's Barry Silbert talks about Genesis in a letter to shareholders, in a letter to shareholders. And you're going to be really surprised, but he basically cried like a little girl, blamed everyone else. I'm a billionaire. I own multi-billion dollar companies, but it's not my fault. I'm not responsible. It's not me. I've been reflecting quite a bit about the past year, the state of the industry, and where things go from here. Here's an update to address those reflections. He wrote this long ass thing, right? There he goes. He said, this past year has been the most difficult of my life. Both personally and professionally, bad actors and repeated blowups have wreaked havoc on our industry with ripple effects extending far and wide. Maybe you're one of them. I'm not saying you're one of them, but maybe there's a chance that you're one of them. How many people can blame each other for the same problems? 
It's really unbelievable. But we cut jobs and we wound down our asset manager and whatever. I have no idea how much contagion there is. I can just tell you that we don't want this to leak into Grayscale. I don't think it will. I can tell you that Valkyrie, of which you guys know I'm an investor, is very aggressively looking to basically take over management of GBTC. And they have much better structured trusts and are actually, I don't know, smart people. But I don't think that we're going to have a problem uh, with grayscale, but that's where like you would have a mass liquidation event of Bitcoin that could actually rock the price. The rest of this to me is baked in. I see Fibo Swanee is here saying, good morning, bro. Dude, what happened to your Twitter account? You got hacked seemingly, but it's been like weeks and clearly you have not gotten it back. And every time I go to check, I do, I go to check to see if you're back and it's someone like trying to sell me an NFT scam. Sorry, man. We got to get you your Twitter account back if you have not gotten it back. Uh, so yeah, there you go. But so yeah, he he cried a lot. And he made excuses and whatever. And since he has people to blame, well, obviously these guys have to blame him. It's a circle of blame. Gemini's Cameron Winklevoss calls for Barry Silbert's ouster from crypto conglomerate DCG. We've all seen Cameron's open letters, which are aggressive and pleasant and whatever, but. I was on Sin City Crypto yesterday and they asked me the question what I thought about this. And it was the first time that I really like in conversation dug into it. This is the Winkle Voss twins fault, at least 50%, right? I mean, at least half, correct? Correct? So let's go back because Gemini Earn is powered by Genesis. And Genesis, Gemini Earn, obviously should be like regularly vetting the person who they are using as a provider of their Earn project. Barry Silbert said that. He said, this has always been arm's length. You guys are looking at our books. You know exactly what's going on. This is your fault, not our fault. Everybody blame each other. That's what we do. Right? But think about this. When Three Arrows Capital went down, like in the summer, everybody everywhere on planet Earth found out that Genesis had loaned over $2 billion to 3AC and that that claim was fucked, that DCG had to step in with a massive loan to Genesis, which is not due to like 2032, because when you give yourself a loan, you can literally just like washing machine that money and never pay it back. Like, oh, we'll just punt it to 2058, right? So at what point, now that I've been thinking about this, and I like the Winkle Vi, it's great. They're great. Whatever, you're great. Your band is probably terrible. You got zapped. Either way, they should name the band, You Got Zucked. But either way, either way, don't you think that if Genesis was providing your customers with a billion dollars in assets under management with yield, that it would have been a red flag that maybe when Genesis lost $2.1 billion or partially lost, that it was time to wind down Gemini? But no, nobody in this industry reacts to red flags. They just hope that unicorns and fairies are going to come down and save their ass before everybody finds out what went wrong. That's what Mashinsky did. That's what Ehrlich did. That's what the BlockFi guys did. That's what literally everyone here has done. Right? We were all trading the GBTC premium free yield for our customers. That disappeared. Oh shit, we need a new way to keep yields at 9%. We better start doing the cash and carry trade. Oh, it's amazing. It's guaranteed free money. Oh, that's been arbitraged away. Now, how the hell are we going to do it? We're going to go into DeFi and we're going to park our assets on Anchor and we're going to buy UST and we're going to give people billions of dollars in uncollateralized loans because I would hate to be embarrassed if I had to lower my yields. It was a real problem because these companies scaled on trades that no rational person thought could last forever, just assuming that maybe the next day they'd find a new trade and a new way to do it. And when you have millions of customers who are only there for the yield and all of a sudden you tell them, oh, the yield's gone, they're going to leave and your business is going to go under. And instead of going under, they fucked everyone instead. This is an orgy of assholes. They can all go have each other. I like to wake up. I kind of like these guys. I don't know. I kind of like them, but this is their fault right? You're deflecting blame and putting it on to Barry Silbert. And yes, he's also an asshole and he's also wrong, but the fiduciary responsibility is yours to your customers. They were not Genesis customers. It's your job to make sure that Genesis is solvent. And everyone knew that they had already wasted billions of dollars. 
They should have wound down Gemini Earn this summer and said, listen, we're just an exchange. We're not an Earn product. <laughs> Gemini, same picture. Coindesk, not getting too creative. Gemini terminates its crypto yield product. Ampy got battle with Genesis. Oh, is it called terminating when you're literally insolvent? <laughs> They terminate, guys, now that there's no money there and there's no chance of getting it back and all the customers have lost anything, guys, we've made the hard decision to terminate this product. Wasn't it like terminated on their behalf? My God. So yeah, the move, which Gemini says requires Genesis to return all locked up assets. Sunsets, the exchange is nearly two year old Gemini earn product. So guys, they're shutting down the already dead thing. Thanks guys. Thanks, that's nice of you. Well, I'll tell you who's had enough of this shit. It's GG Gary Gensel. He's entered the chat. These guys are arguing on Twitter and the SEC is like, well, all of you sold unregistered securities. Seems like maybe they did and has charged both companies. This is big news. SEC charging both companies. And it's big news because fuck you, Gary Gensel. You know why? This helps literally nobody anywhere with anything, which has become the mandate of the SEC. If these were unregistered securities and there was a problem, maybe you should have pointed that out, allowed them to wind down and saved all the customers from losing all their money. But instead, we're gonna punish a bunch of people after the money's already gone, which will recoup nothing for anyone, just so that we can show that we've got the big regulatory muscles and we're flexing in crypto bad. It's complete crap. It's complete crap. You regulate to protect people. You don't punish people after everybody has already not been protected. It is absolutely, absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. And what was uh, Cameron Winklevoss's response to this? Super lame manufactured parking ticket. So yeah, they'll get a slap on the wrist, much like BlockFi did, and everything will move on. And Gary will get his little PR moments, like he made a video about Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian sold Ethereum Max. Let me explain to you what a security is, Kim Kardashian. Did you guys hear the name Kim Kardashian? We got Kim Kardashian. Here's what he said. We allege that Genesis and Gemini offered unregistered securities to the public, bypassing disclosure requirements designed to protect investors. Bitch, you're designed to protect investors. We at SEC Gov charge Genesis and Gemini for the unregistered offer and sale of crypto asset securities through Gemini Earn. Crypto intermediaries need to comply with our securities laws. This protects investors, promotes trust in markets. Not optional. It's the law. Thanks for help. Thanks for your help. Thanks for your help. Very helpful. I find it very helpful. Do you find it very helpful? <sighs> Ray Rational says Gary is a regular accident. I like that. That's fun. Anywho, the moral of the story today, I want to just tell you, is a bunch of people deflecting blame to other people, and they're all to blame collectively, and they they screwed us all. It is what it is. It is what it is. I didn't see if Fibo Swanee over here told us what happened to his uh, Twitter account, but it seems bad. It was bad. You guys go there. Or, he says, 11 days it took Twitter support to get to me. Four online support tickets for me and over 50 reports from others saying I was compromised. I'm finally back. Thanks all for the help. Nice. Nice. Because yesterday you were not back, my friend. This is from yesterday. Ethereum, Ether, Ether, Nas. It's two month high ahead of US CPI. Market breadth remains weak. Market doesn't feel like it's breadth, breadth, breadth is so weak. Shit's been good. Stop being a hater. Stop being a hater. Right, but yeah, guys, we saw that Ethereum made it over 1,400, 1.4K all day, as I would said, doing some breaking out. There's some other coins here doing it, but the other thing is boring. Let's take a look at the ETH chart. I mean, that's pretty damn good, guys. Look at this move. One, two, three, four, five green, maybe six in a row with a couple little candles. Some charts, it was nine days in a row of green, depending on where you looked. But most notably, look at Ethereum smashing the 50 MA on the daily, now smashing through the 200 MA on increased volume. If you were trading from 1221, your target was 1392, right? I had big cheds on and he said, man, if we really flip 14 convincingly, I would think about getting long. I'm assuming he's short right now though. So he told me 1430, I think, like right here, maybe this low. 
But this holds a 200 MA. We're looking at a target of up here in the 1700s. Ethereum looking really, really good still here. But I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb. Look, I've got a template now with MA and RSI and say this is massively overbought. Up to 77 on the daily overbought. That's not as overbought as Bitcoin was actually. And no hint yet of bearish divergence. What I'm going to assume is that we're going to make another push up, get a bear div, and then get the retracement that everyone's looking for. But assume nothing makes an ass out of both you and me. Let's move on. We're going to get more charts later. Amazon Web Services taps Avalanche to help bring blockchain technology to enterprises and governments. Wow, dude. M and Gun Sir right there looking just pumped. Avalanche is the first blockchain to form a partnership with Amazon's cloud computing platform. I mean, dude, a AWS runs everything. And AWS does support Ethereum and others, but this is actually going to actively help people operate uh, to, to run Avalanche nodes. What else are they doing here? We got a whole 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 list of uh, things they're going to do. Avalanche also plans to add subnet deployment, a network within a network to the AWS marketplace, enabling both individuals and institutions to easily launch custom subnets. This is the... This is the whole pitch of Avalanche, right? They're a layer one, but they are, their whole business model initially when they created it was to be an enterprise blockchain where you could form a private blockchain on Avalanche using their technology, but it would be closed off and walled off. And obviously working with AWS makes that a hell of a lot easier, a hell of a lot easier. This is just huge news, huge news. This is what Emin said. It has been a huge boon for both individual and enterprise developers to be able to spin up nodes and test networks on the fly with AWS and whatever legal jurisdiction makes the most sense for them. Pretty big, pretty big. I haven't even, to, to be honest, I haven't even looked to uh, see what's going on with the coin. I'm going to open up a chart right now. I'm assuming that it should have pumped on this news. I haven't even checked. I'm not going to lie. Is that showing up? There we go. Oh, well, I had the chart. Well, my alarm should have gone off. There's an alarm right there. You see that? But yeah, this looks like what Bitcoin's doing. One, two, three touches, breakout on extremely high volume, high volume retest. I mean, if I was going to trade, I'm not trading anything right now, but if I was going to do it, I would look for a retest of that or that before targeting, I don't know, $22 or something like that. So there's a big move to be made here if you catch the retest, but you certainly didn't want to buy the breakout comes back down but that's nice volume on a clean breakout looking pretty good maybe you would call this a target like 20 bucks but if you can catch a retest of that i'm going to go ahead and also assume that this one is overbought because everything i've looked at is overbought yeah massively overbought it got up to about 80 but yeah man avax looking pretty good and you fundamentally have to like i don't know a deal with fucking amazon dude these guys got bezos 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 Hey guys, in uh, other news, Coinbase could be one of crypto's long-term survivors, which literally everybody knows, right? Uh, this guy had the Oppenheimer senior analyst though, rolls in, he's like, well, shit, everything else is going under, Coinbase might as well win. But I agree. I mean, I think it's worth pointing out once again that, uh, that Coinbase is regulated, their books are vetted, their assets are known, they're publicly traded. This is the best company to come out of all this regulation and all of these things. It even more time. I think if we put, is Coinbase to survive? Question mark? Yeah, I mean, Coin, yeah, the answer is yes. Coinbase probably going to survive. Cloud Casino says Avalanche is another unregistered security. So now we have another centralized security, ran off Amazon servers that can censor you or ban you. Great. Great. I, I can refute that. And I did this also on Sin City Crypto yesterday. What I had to say was there's Bitcoin and there's everything else. And don't judge them by the same standard because that would be the same as judging gold and Amazon by the same standard. You can be a gold bug and still think Amazon's a cool company and worthwhile to invest in and complete them and, and, and keep them completely separate. And that's how I view it. Bitcoin is a generational investment it's hard money. And the rest of this is VC speculative tech investments. And that's fine. And guess what? Almost everything that we think is decentralized in crypto is not because dun, 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 it's still running on AWS. 
we still depend on centralized servers from huge companies to run our DeFi and decentralized platforms. So listen, I don't, I think your point is perfectly well made and fair, but I don't know, just don't buy it. Also, huge difference. You're talking about Avalanche, the coin. I'm talking about the tech and the blockchain and adoption, which has nothing to do with the coin itself. So that's one of the problems that we have is that the coins don't necessarily need them. And we can see the company be successful without the coin being successful. Yeah, Coinbase is regulated and has their financials regularly vetted, says Sean. Hmm, sounds like a real business. Yeah, it's an actual company. Crazy, I know. Flats Mac agrees. Yep, Bitcoin and crypto are two different things completely. And if you start to look at them through this different lens, you don't need to be like an aggressive and angry maxi because you can just be dismissive of it. There's a lot of companies that are publicly traded that I think are really stupid and bad. But that doesn't mean that I don't think people should be able to invest in them in a free market or do whatever they want. Free market, except for all cryptos not named Bitcoin. So dumb. Sorry. It's dumb. It's dumb. Top NFT artists are launching projects on Instagram and selling out in seconds. I didn't say that they were sellouts. You said that they were sellouts. The platform has facilitated successful NFT drops from artists, including Michael Johnson. That's my dog. Drifter shoots and Rafiq and it all bridging the gap between Web2 platforms and Web3 technology. This is cool because we obviously saw that Meta, Facebook, Instagram are interested in allowing people to connect their NFTs, but now you can sell them directly and do a drop for selected artists. It will be tested out and they're selling out very quickly because Instagram is huge. This is actual adoption, guys. This is actual adoption. This is actual adoption. Crazy, I know, but it's all happening. It's all happening. And it's interesting because this is a nice bridge between Web 2 and Web 3, which is what we all want in the end. Anyways, and holy shit, check out this news, dude. Remember BitConnect? I remember. You didn't lose your money. Well, uh, all right, you lost your money. Victims of the $2.4 billion fraud, $2.4 billion, uh, to recoup $17 million. Like, not each. Think, like, total. Total. Crazy. This is one of the biggest scams ever, and there's just nothing left. Restitution of 17 million to 800 victims from over 400 countries. What blows my mind is that 800 victims were able to put together $2.4 billion. Francine says, are people using NFTs? Drusified says, I'm using an NFT. Cool conversation, guys. Uh, yes, I, I do think that people are using NFTs. Uh, Starbucks has a full ass reward program. They're just not calling them NFTs, which is the best possible thing. We need people to stop calling them NFTs and we need people to stop calling it crypto. They just need to become rewards program, right? I think at, at Starbucks is calling them stamps or rewards or something, but just because it's based on crypto technology doesn't mean we need to call it a non-fungible token, which is the most boring thing and hardest thing to explain to anyone who doesn't know what the word fungible means. And let's be honest, none of you knew what the word fungible means until you heard about NFTs and looked it up on ChatGPT, right? Being honest. But yes, we are seeing real adoption of NFTs. That doesn't, I, I can't tell you the numbers of how many people are actually using that Starbucks reward program, but Starbucks is really big and important company, and they're actually adopting this technology. So yes, people are using it. Uh, crypto assets. I don't even like crypto. Yeah, I like crypto assets. Correct, Mark. There were people who argued digital assets, and I was like, that includes like MP3s, right? So crypto assets, I think, is probably the best. I'm not unhinged, dude. I'm just me. You guys remember, this is how I used to just roll all the time. Anyways, let's take a look at the Bitcoin chart, shall we? Mm. 19K all day. 19K all day. What I'd like to point out is this is the weekly MACD. I've showed you it before, but the weekly MACD crossed bullish in August and the histogram, that's, you see these little lines right here? That's called a histogram. Histogram. It's on the top. You see, there's a line right here. And when it's on the bottom, it's bad. When it's on the top, it's good. Well, you'll notice that MACD crossed bullish and has been pushing up even through all of this negative price action and news, which gives you basically bullish divergence between MACD and price, obviously. This is on the weekly, though. 
This is a huge signal. And I said, when it happened in August, this will probably take a lot of time. By the way, prices were still down below where they are now. Take a lot of time, but this is a huge signal. And imagine if MACD goes all the way up there, bitch. Interestingly, there's a death cross right here between the 50 and 200 EMAs, but who uses EMAs anymore? It's an exponential moving average. Everybody seems to use MAs again, or simple MAs, which is the average of the previous, if it's the 50 MA, the previous 50 candles. So if it's the four hour, it's 50 four hour candles. If it's daily, it's 50 daily. And an EMA is an exponential moving average, which more heavily weights in the formula, more recent price action. So you get a different view of it. But as I've said, these death crosses, especially on like a weekly chart, it's a lagging indicator. It's because of what happened here and not what's happening here. And if this continues to turn up, we're going to see these turn up massively. Take a look at the daily chart. I mean, shit, y'all, dog. You saw how Ethereum had already hit the 200 MA and flipped it. That would take Bitcoin up to 19 thousand five hundred to make the same move but we saw it flipping the 50 ma here and it's been nothing but bull since got back above seventeen thousand five ninety two, which has been a key level for me that was the low from back in june that was broken and very temporarily got above but the 50 ma was rejection got back above eighteen thousand one fifty seven, which was the lows of sort of all of this price action and now breaking out of the descending resistance that should be the signal that we're headed back up. I mean, this should target at least these highs here, 21,475, something like that. But I will tell you that this is probably massively overbought. I had looked at it. And by the way, real volume, the biggest volume really since the FTX debacle. Oh, and look at this. The dick and balls pattern from the Bollinger Bands has uh, exploded to the upside. You guys want to see it that way. It's your up and to the right is my up and to the left. Way out over our skis on the daily Bollinger Bands here, right? Should eventually see a retrace back to test it. But when you get this high above the band, usually you kind of come back in and just keep pushing. Things are looking pretty good, man. Really good. Really good. Let me go see if I can find the uh, line chart, which has RSI. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to look at this, bring it over in a second. Bring it over. I've got it in the holding pen for you where to go look at this i mean yeah daily rsi still rising and listen there's a lot of people who think when you get overbought that's the power power zone 82.64 i mean this should retrace right i mean maybe we'll get a bearish divergence a retrace and that could be some sideways form a bull flag something like that things are looking pretty good could it be a bull trap oh my god absolutely are you guys kidding me of course it could be Fiboswani, the DNB pattern, LOL. I mean, you can't tell me that you don't look at every Bollinger band when they tighten and think that. I mean, look at this one. I'm not trying to be inappropriate. This is, you know, you learn about this in high school science, but I mean, what, what is that? You know, this one's big. Like, what, what does that look like to you? And then, pew, 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 pew. Very mature. I'm an adult. One day, my seven-year-old is going to accidentally tune into one of these and be like, what's that, Dad? <sighs> Man, I don't know. Uh, you're, uh, Michael Otis asks, bear flag on the daily. Let's look. Mm, I don't think so, man. Too long. This, if, if this is the drop, let's take a look, first of all. Here, we'll just do this roughly. So I will tell you, it's not a bear flag because we've overshot 50%. And there's way too much price action behind the drop. But I will tell you is that, interestingly, that really just uh, tapped. Let me extend these. This is not locking in. I don't know why. But that, that just tapped the golden pocket right there. So that is interesting. This is where we should start to see some uh, correction, retracement. Look at that. Right between the 61 and the 65 of the entire FTX move. I think maybe you push to the 200, we get a retracement, and then we get a push. That's kind of what I'm thinking about. Yeah, kind of what I'm thinking of. Okay, so listen, I, I looked at two alts very briefly in the newsletter this week. One of them was APT, Aptos. I had Mo Shake on last week, as you guys know, on the podcast. Aptos launched, I don't own this coin, so shut up. God, I don't own either of these. I own Bitcoin, Ethereum of what I've talked about. And I will tell you when I own something so that you're not going to tell me that I'm sharing it on YouTube so I can dump on your fucking face. Shut up. Massively oversold, I mean, overbought here. But we've got a breakout through key resistance, right? This is the resistance of this entire move. This coin launched in like October, 
depth of the bear market and their seed second round was led by FTX and they collapsed in November and they took the brunt of this, right? Like anyone else. I would not buy this right now. But the way I would trade this is a drop back to 543 to retest it as support and then be just looking for a move up to like 823. Nice sizable move, 60% move or so, right? Because this has got to reset. So I'd be looking for some sort of, you know, listen, in a situation, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Shut up, shut up. You're looking, I'd be looking for something like this, you know? We get like a little bull flag, and boom, All right? So that's interesting to me. Near is also interesting, but also looking for a dip. I like retest. I want, I would not buy this hitting over bot and break and running right into resistance. I'd be looking for it to come back, you know, a dollar fifty, maybe down here, and then look for an attempted breakout through descending resistance. A lot of people don't like descending resistance. Admittedly, they fake out a lot. But the good news is, is if you get rejected, you get a lower entry on the breakout or retest. So both of those are looking interesting. Yeah. Both those are looking interesting. Yeah, bro, pump those bonk bags. I didn't even know what bonk was. And I was like, up 34,000%. Let me go buy some. No, I didn't. That's dumb. You know what I'm going to do now, guys? I got a little time. Got nothing else queued up. I can't guarantee I'll get to them, but hit me with some requests. Let's go. What charts do you guys want to see? What charts do you want to see? What do you want to see? I'm going to go tweet right now. Hitting the chart requests right now. I'm going to do it. I'm tweeting it right now, live on camera. What do you guys got? Phantom. I see Phantom in there. Let's see what we got. All my layouts. FM. Boom. I don't know. And by the way, it's not like I've checked these. So they're, you know, we used to do this on Chartapalooza. I would bring up all my old ideas and be like, if they look bad, sorry, bro. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Extend this. This is pretty much your range, right? Although, honestly, if you're being intellectually honest, it would be at the bottom here, and this would all be deviation. You don't really have a range, so let's just kill that. If we're doing the descending thing, you had the collapse in May. So we're looking at some sort of situation like this, right? Oh. Man, everything's breaking out. Everything's breaking out. You know what I'm saying? But you got to be careful here. So this is another one. We're like, now it's broken out. So an aggressive trader buys this breakout, right? A more conservative trader looks for a retest because it's less of a fake out. Like this daily candle, we've seen it a million times, could close back below resistance and drop. But there are people who want to buy breakouts and do that. Your upside right now is like 31.50. I'm going to also, let's uh, go ahead and bring up this template. Well, you're above the 50 MA, which is now curling up. You're above the 200 MA, which is starting. You're going to probably get a golden cross, but massively overbought. My problem here is that RSI is massively overbought on everything. The upside is limited before a pullback. Listen, every bull market, and I'm not saying we're in one, you have to start somewhere, and that always ends up with overbought, retrace, overbought. That's why markets go like this, right? But yeah, I mean, FTM looking kind of good, especially if you can get some sort of retest and push, but back above 31.50. If you get above that, you're starting to talk about a move to like 55 cents, something like that, looking really good. Uh, what else do we got here? I think Fibbo Swanee said gold. Did I see gold? I'll look at gold, bro. I'm sure I've got a gold chart up here somewhere. Gold. Boom. This deviation, man. Yeah, the range that it's been in for uh, since 2020, when it flipped, and we, I talked about this, but when it flipped that, that was your signal. Flipped right back into the range. And we have other things that I've seen. Coinbase. Not to get all like, uh, let me see. Coinbase, similar. That's not what I wanted. Coinbase, I was looking at this morning. I put it in the newsletter. Also, like if you drew a range from here to here, you have a deviation. It's flipped the bottom of the range. Retested. Look, this is what you want. This is the entry. Gets back in the range. Retest 40 bucks and now pushing towards 50. I, nobody wants to hear this shit, but the target is $116. Right. And even if it's not, let's draw it as a range. Right. This is where you bottomed. Right. This is where you topped. So you at least have a target here at the mid range at 68.90. That's still a massive trade. I bought more Coinbase when it flipped back. No, I didn't buy it at 30 bucks, but I bought it again at 41 bucks. Right. 
But gold, listen, this is in a range at a top, which is more of a distribution, you would think. Coinbase was in an accumulation range. When you're at a top, it's, you could consider it more distribution, but it held the range. So now you're looking at, I don't know, 1920, I think, was the highs from 2011, which we had broken. So that's key resistance. But this should be heading back to the highs of 2073. It flipped the mid-range. Look at that. Tested as support and rocketing upwards. Rocketing upwards. Michael Otis says DYDX. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got in all my layouts. This is fun. Remember when we used to do this? Remember when this was a thing? God, where is, it, where is even the price, dude? Is it up? Is it down? Is DYDX no longer on Binance? Like my chart. Oh, there, wow. 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 That means last time we were looking at this, it was uh, up there. The RSI is particularly relevant at the moment. Let's just look at price action. All right, this is an accumulation range, right? Let's delete some things. Look at, look at that breakdown up there. That was it. Broke that range. Woo. Okay. This is an acu this is accumulation. Why cough, bro? Right? You bottom tier. That's the like bottom of all bottoms, right? Look at that. Look at that range. Look at it. Marvel in its glory. Right? Perfect touch at the top of the range. That even wicked slightly above to find liquidity and all the way back down to the range. You're talking about from 270 down to a dollar. So right now you're looking at a move hopefully to $1.65 at the EQ. That's the mid-range. And if that flips, you're looking at $2.70. Right? So, I mean, you know, like, you know, like, that looks pretty good. Probably, the problem is this is not getting the huge volume spike we're seeing on a lot of other assets. Let's see this. And you're right at the 50 MA. With a death cross. Golden cross, death cross, doesn't really matter. But uh, this should at least push up to overbought. I would be looking for like 166 and then a meaningfully re meaningful retrace. That's what I'd be looking for. I saw that uh, Victoria, hi, Victoria, is asking for Tesla. Just wondering. I mean, that was brutal. So... You have a breakdown of this range. It's been in since the beginning of 2021, right? Where it topped, not what you want to see. That makes it more of a distribution and an aggressive breakdown on increasing volume from there. So listen, this could have bottomed because this, it could, right? This is a major bottoming candle right here. These are weekly candles, by the way. This is a bottoming candle. Let's blow that up. And right into an area of interest, right? If you were just, let's uh, just flippantly drawing lines, you know, you got kind of this right here. We also got this down here, right? So the problem is, depends on where you draw the line, it's kind of a zone. You are definitely still, so maybe you get a reversal. This is not, you want to see a real bullish candle though to close today. You want to see this like fill in the body to, to further up because your problem here is that you have all this price action, right? And so you draw that, oh, that was bad. But you draw that across and you've obviously got like an area of resistance here that we're trading into, right? So maybe this is just doing one of these. If it does, if it does do that, which I would be more, I mean, the bias would be there. You know, you're starting to talk about 60 bucks, 90 bucks. I mean, listen, I don't know what's gonna happen here. People are not happy with him. Tesla's had a bit of bad news. This candle's turning red right now, blue in my case. Nice little doji. A lot of indecision. Hard to hard to really make a, make a call on that. Hard. Jordan wants XRP. Take a look. Or right, XRP myself. I'm going on Kitco today at eleven. I don't know if it's live. Actually, I think it's recorded. Last time I went on Kitco, I didn't know what they were to interview me with David Lynn, like they've got their proper studio and stuff. And apparently it's like a heavy, like metals audience, like gold maximalists. I had no idea. They brought me in and started talking about uh, Bitcoin. And I said on there that gold was dead. Nobody cared about it anymore. Bitcoin was new gold. And it was like their most watched video of ever, but only because every comment was, this guy's literally mentally handicapped. Fuck this guy. Look at his stupid face. I hate him. Bitcoin people are dumb. 
<coughs> Talk so much a cough. I don't see anything uh, too exciting on XRP. But this is a nice bottoming candle here on the weekly. This is what you would want, actually. So, yeah, I do, actually. I lied. So, you had this breakdown. Fine. I think we can dispense with that at this point. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Right? Oh, draw that down if, if necessary. But what's interesting, this is what you wanted to see on that Tesla candle. You see that? Should we zoom in? When you see a bottoming candle like we saw, you want to see bullish follow through. So this should be heading to at least 41 cents. If it flips that, we're talking about 54 cents. But this is a really nice uh, weekly candle and really nice follow through. So XRP, like the rest of the market, looking pretty decent. Oh my God, I, you guys have a lot of things going on here. I see chilies. Chilies. Baby back ribs. Chili's baby back ribs, barbecue sauce. It was higher. Chili's baby back ribs, chili baby back ribs, barbecue sauce. That's how it kind of was up there. Uh, this is what I drew last time, and that's, I mean, it's kind of long for a bull flag, but it does have the vibe of the world's largest bull flag that started in 2021. It's a weekly chart, though. Let's take a look at the daily. Mm, look at that. See, like, you can tell... I was never an MA guy, right? And I don't even, let's just get rid of all these lines. Coming from, we can always redraw them. No big deal. Actually, I like that one. Um, you saw how ETH was above both the daily 50 and the daily 200 with both curling up. Well, now we have a 50 that's coming down acting as resistance. So this is one of those coins that you want to wait a little longer, maybe until you see something more convincing. Really nice move, but running dead into resistance here. That's also... Let's do it as a zone. Charting is fun. We should have done it more often. You know, you got this whole area right here. Something, you know, doesn't matter. Uh, we could pull it down. Maybe, we, yeah, something like that, right? That was all this resistance. That's the support. That broke, and that's now likely to be resistance. I would say the chili is not bad, but looks like it's coming into a lot of resistance right now. And there are coins that have already changed the trend by getting above sort of the daily levels or breaking out as I showed you. So that one's less, a little less compelling than before. Uh, Gala, please. Yeah, I got in trouble on Kitco. I'm surprised they invited me back. It's been like a year, but let's go. You know what I'm saying? Gala, no, nope. see, look, we're going to look at them all sort of in the same context here, maybe. Let's see. see, you see the difference between this and Chili's? Of course, we're now massively oversold. This one's going to have bearish divergence. I would wait for a retest down lower. I would not buy this here. Look, it wicked right through kind of resistance. We can call it there even. I like that better. Right. And massively overbought. And it would take a lot for our side to get back above this little peak right here. Let's, sorry, I forget to zoom in because I'm looking at this on a huge screen. RSI made a high. It looks like it might make a lower high. Listen, that's not confirmed. It could continue up, but you're at resistance with overbought RSI. I would look for this to like flag and come back down here and get some sort of retest. Maybe even the 50 MA, you never got it retested, curls up, get a retest. Hard to buy this, but if you start closing convincingly above these levels, it starts to look a lot more interesting. Jasmine, por favor. I don't even know. Do I even have a Jasmine chart? I feel like I have every chart because we used to do chart of Palooza, so, but I don't. All right, let's, let's do a new chart. <clears throat> Jasmine, USDT. Wow, I don't know what that is, but it looks terrible. Uh, let's get my theme. Let's get some, oh, I don't want an alert. Let's get some indicators, some basics. That touched overbought as well. The whole market's overbought. I mean, that just is what it is. Let's take a look at the weekly. Look, it's literally never even gotten below oversold since it was invented. I mean, I don't know. You could draw a line a lot of ways on this. Hard to choose a top here from which to draw a line. Maybe you would take it from like this peak. Something like that. But this is above the 50 MA, so you have a clear target of the 200. That's almost a 50% move. 
not only did it break the 50 MA, it did so on an increase in volume and retested it as support. It's breaking. This looks good. This looks good. I would say that your areas of trouble, if this continues up here, maybe here. I mean, yeah, here because of the 200 MA here. All right, let's not get excited. Let's just leave it at you could double up and go to 0.0082 here or go up 50% to 0.006 something. Just got to be careful here. Actually, this never technically hit overbought. So this has room to run. You're in the power zone here. I like that. Looks pretty good. Corey says ADA. I, mean, we gotta, I, can't, uh, I can't leave here without naming this. Obviously cannot. I, I typed that wrong. Now I got to rename it, guys. I'm not... Sorry, sorry, I can't. I can't. Forget about it, then I won't be able to find it. What did we ask for? ADA. Pretty good. Back above the 50, but look at that. You had massive bullish divergence. You could have bought this on the bull div at 24 cents, and now you got a high of 34. 50 per, almost, you know, 45% move on bullish divergence with RSI that was oversold on the daily chart. Ooh, fancy me that. Now you're looking for a retrace though. So you're looking for a move down to 29 cents, maybe to the 50 MA, targeting the 200 again, 40 cents. So you're looking, dee, 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 boom, same thing. Nothing different here. Same charts over and over and over again. So literally nobody has learned anything. Everyone is just waiting to gamble again. I mean, not everyone, just us, to be fair. Not looking to gamble, man. It's what we do. Look at charts. Just have fun. Enjoy yourself. Don't be a hater. Maybe adjust your attitude uh, and uh, be, be nice. Just be nice. Uh, Fet, please. You go fet yourself. I just got some sort of alert went off. What is that? Am I like supposed to be on this thing? No, it's at 11. All right. Are we having fun? Are we having fun, guys? I'm having fun. Fet, please. Cheers, Scott. Whoa. That looks fat and amazing. This is a weekly, by the way. And look at the volume coming into resistance. That's what I'm talking about. Like, this is what we were looking at on certain other coins. You hit resistance, you kind of flag. Volume goes down as it's dropping. If volume's going up as price drops, beware. If volume's dropping as price drops, you're consolidating, and then you get the big push on volume above the 50 MA, which it tested, and now the brand, brand new minted 200 MA on the weekly. I mean, that is just a rocket. Like, I can't buy that here. I just can't. It's not my nature to buy something that's flying. But you want to buy dips? Honestly, man, we're going to get dips and then like we're going to get like a bad inflation print and everything is going to go to zero and it's going to be like bull trap was so obvious. But like you trade the chart that's in front of you and this all looks bullish and you have a massive bullish cross here right below price of the 50 and 200 MAs and both are curling up. That's when you start to pay attention. You could do you see the difference in this trend on the daily versus Chili's, which we just brought up. See it? Pretty gratuitous, right? So you want to get to the ones that are trending up. Not every coin is trending up right now. Not every coin is trending up right now. Um, uh, let me see what we got. Maybe a quick copyright. I'm not playing. I'm not copyright infringing. I'm going to lose my channel. Drew asked for FET. We did that. Ocean. Yeah. I do think it's silly, though, by the way, that these are going up because of ChatGPT. Same thing we did with the metaverse shit last year, right? Meta rebranded from Facebook to Meta, and like every metaverse token in crypto went up for no apparent reason. It's what we're doing now. Like these things have nothing to do with ChatGPT, but now that AI has like become real, everybody's buying this shit. Oh, this is at resistance. Probably massively overbought. That's already had one bear div. This, this should retrace. Nothing's guaranteed, but this should retrace. And look, maybe uh, imagine if this stays bullish, but you can buy it at, you're getting that cross. You can buy it down here at, you know, maybe 22. But even if these cross, 
You get it down here at 17, 18 cents. Listen, if it flips that, RSI is going to continue up. You'll be looking good. This is consolidating, but I would be, what I would want, doesn't even matter what's going to happen. What I would want is a bull flag, breakout, flip, and then up. Or even like down to here, test it. That would be sick. But I mean, this is at resistance. You can't buy it right now. You can buy it if it breaks resistance and catch the retest. Just got to be careful. That's what I got for you. Uh, what do we got? What is graft coin? You're a graft miner. What is it? Is that the name of the coin, graft? Do I have a, a really a thing? Graft? This doesn't exist. I'm going to be very upset with you. Graft. Let's see. Oh. Does it have a name? GRT? Is that a thing? Uh, literally, GRT, someone's saying GRT. Yeah, there you go. G R T. Oh, it's way down there. Look at all those lines. Doing some things. This is still in its range. <clears throat> Yet to break out of anything. If you're looking at the very like local sort of drop here, this is your range. You're at the top of it, above the 50, so maybe you push to the 200. It's not bad. Bearish divergence could happen if it drops any further. I would wait till it's above the range highs here, but then you got this resistance. Mm. I just either want a retrace to like the 50 in the mid range here, like, you know, 0 0.063 or something way up higher that is on a convincing move. Not bad though. Not bad. Soul. I know you got soul. Well, it dropped as far as it was supposed to. Let me get rid of all this. It was for the ego anyways. Nice curling up 50 MA, starting to make the move. I would want to buy this at 1496. Already overbought, not as much as some other things. And no no hint of bearish divergence yet. I would say that you're targeting 2791 at the 200 MA, which is also the lows here. 26. We even call it this one. Something like that. You know, 200 MA comes down, meets it. Something like that. Looks good. Looks fine. Atlas, you're triggering me, dude. I haven't looked at Star Atlas in so long. I have a very largely bag that's down 99.9%. Uh, .9 Hoddle. Look at it. Holy God. What a chart. 0 0.001. I remember being like, it's 0 0.01. What a disaster. I still think Star Atlas is awesome, but look how oversold. 15. Holy shite. Let's get MA is on here. It's going to be below everything. This one looks just, oh, wait, that's a FTX chart. Is it still even trading on there? Give me a break. Come on. Let's see if we can get another chart of this. It's still FTX, right? Let's see. Let's see if I can find a new chart of this. Atlas, crypto, star atlas. I mean, this is not trading anyone anywhere cool. Gate IO. I don't know, whatever. Doesn't matter. Let's get it. At least we can do it. Okay, well, now we at least have a uh, usable chart. Looking at it on freaking. Not as bad as it looked on uh, FTX, just dead. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I'm not selling it. I think we're at least targeting the, the 200 MA here, but man, I mean, what a wrecked chart. It's never like, I mean, it's done nothing but go down. I don't know, man. 
maybe you get above like 0.003, you know, this kind of range right here, even these highs, 0.004, you start thinking about it. I don't know, 0.039 is what that is. I don't know. We need like another metaverse pump for this to happen. But I think it's at least going to the 200 MA here. Could be worse. But I mean, this is still down trending, right? Hardly excited. Dot. Now I'm going to have to get out of here after this one, guys, because I have that thing with the place and the stuff. Dot's doing it. Breaking out. Look at that. Should, my alarm should have gone off. What the hell, man? Where's my alarm? See the alarm? That should go off. Ridiculous. Ridiculous, man. Mm, should be going to six bucks here. It's broken and retested, technically. There is a spike in volume. It would be sweet to get a retest back to 450 to buy it, but honestly, the real trade here is like get above six bucks. You know, like, because now that's your upside, and then trade it to like nine six. That's how I would look at it, guys. I got to go. That was fun. We're gonna do that again more often as long as things are going already. Woo! There's your alarm. Those buttons don't trigger as well. Prime XPT. Click on it. Make me look good. Just click on the thing. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for you today. I will, of course, be back on Monday because it's what we do. And it's going to be awesome. This was fun. Crazy news. Fun charts. Good times. Love you guys. Have a wonderful weekend. See you soon. Peace. That's dope.